I'm going to play some clips, which I was going to play to John. I don't know if he's listening. It, John, you, you can try phoning in 01392 690 450 uh, because we're going to be doing a... How's that? No, I don't... I don't this, this microphone is just... You've got to be right in the right place. I'm sure it's a very good microphone. E everything's been upgraded. Yeah, that's better. Uh, everything's been upgraded. You've just got to learn how how to use it properly, I think. That's the, that's the point of view I'm t adopting at the moment. We'll see how long that lasts. Uh, John, we, we're going to make a definite proposal that we need the Orcam My Eye camera, which is um, several thousand pounds, but it's the next move for uh, the We Don't Know project. So it, it, it will um, in some way relate to the whole show. So I will get, I will get to, to have a look at it sometimes. But uh, John is the person who knows most about it. It, um, it clips onto glasses, so it's very stable, and it, it translates text into speech. That's the main thing it does. It can it can look at other things as well, but let's let's just say it's the high end of text to speech, and that's also part of the AI scene. Um, it's got a, a lot of AI built into it, and eventually, it's quite possible that a voice interface is what everybody will have, or sound a sound interface will be the way people relate to computers or the cloud or whatever it's called. At that at that point, um, so that's that's what we want to do. We'll we'll put this onto onto YouTube, onto the um, Rougemont Global Broadcasting YouTube channel, and eventually we'll launch a, an an appeal, which is is um, a sort of funding device, and the 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 offer will be that we we will make public through various means whatever we can discover about the technology available at, um, at BET uh, in January next year uh, that relates to text-to-speech and speech-to-text. Um, you can call it ass assistive technology. I think that's the official name for it. But as I say, it's, it, 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 if you if you f follow what's going on with AI, they're, they're, they're basically going to use the capability to interpret voice to expand on the interfaces to I think you still have a phone but whether you'll be trying to tap small graphics I don't I don't that might that may not that may not happen for any for anybody at a certain point so the scope of this is going to be fairly extensive but what I'm what I'm trying to do meanwhile is persuade John that some of this stuff's available anyway and um, I've been noticing for example academic journals um, and I'll, I'll say a little bit after, after I play this um, why this one's interesting anyway um, but they, this one has a, a little button on the page would you, would you like to just listen to it so I'm going to play this. If John is listening, or I'll, 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 I'll um. Yeah, this is the the, the other thing. Well, I mean, I'll play it to him at some point, and you you may find that the the sequence of this show is out of sync with um, scheduling, as in radio. So in other words, we we may we may have to uh, come back to this late later, or you may find you'd expect. Uh, a logical development from one item to another, and it may not it may not happen. But I've been persuaded by John's um, "thank you for being late" uh, sequence. Or no, I think I found wherever it came from. We've been following this um, idea that being late or being not in time sequence actually is quite good because it creates 
little gaps in an accelerated uh, situation for reflection and study and um, maybe 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 it's a good thing um, and John says I don't have enough um, enthusiasm for this although I've I've sort of got the idea sometimes I don't I don't fully appreciate it but anyway um, I think I'll play the clip, and John, if you're if you're listening, does this is th is this easy to listen to, and does it does it make a a lot of sense? Yeah, few EPUB abstract educational technology ed tech investors have become increasingly influential in education. However, they remain under researched. We address this deficit and introduce the grammar and landscape of EdTech investment into education research. We empirically examine venture capital EdTech investors and argue that they are economic and political actors. Investors construct the EdTech industry through their investment and advancing particular imaginaries. They legitimate their authority in education through narratives of expertise and measures of social impact. They consolidate the tech industry by constructing social networks to perform the political work of futuring. The analysis provides original insights into the power of ed tech investors in education and proposes a research agenda examining new relations between the education, technology, and finance industries. Keywords Education Technology Futures Investment Investor Venture Capital Previous article view latest articles next article. Introduction. So John, uh six nine oh four five oh because we we do think that the um the phone anybody can phone in by the way. Um the the phone is now working. This this studio is getting pretty good in in many in many ways. Um the, the journal article, it's from uh, Globalization, Societies and Education, Taylor and Francis, and it's called When Public Policy Fails, in quotes, and Venture Capital Saves. And um, saves education, sorry. EdTech investors as economic and political actors. And I, I, I think it's quite relevant today because um, there's also tweets which you, you can find. If you, if you st sort of st start with, um, well, either, either find that or have, have a look at We Not Know, W-E-N-O-T-N-O, -O, or myself, Will789GB, and you'll find tweets around this. But clearly the, the meeting on artificial intelligence today has got, education as one aspect of it uh, Google have, have mentioned that in their their presentation and there's there's comment on that um, I've, I've I can I can see various points of view about this the the um, the way the way that only the big companies have been invited that the whole discussion ignores what trade unions might have to say I can see that's a that's a big problem um, but at the same time the the big tech people are are continuing with the with the, the project for online learning as as technology and as uh, learning theory as a as a, a situation that's going to work and I, th I think a lot of the universities um, they have a critique of it, but they're not they're not really trying to develop platforms that would improve on it or offer a better version of it. Uh, they still seem to need to be very happy with the the buildings and going back to the model that that was working previously. Uh, so I, I I I can see all those debates being looked at from various points of view, and maybe we'll we'll come back to that. Um, Chris, Chris from the Wild Show, Chris Norton and myself are def definitely going to bet in January. So there's pl there's plenty of time to to discuss how these 
things would would work. I'm going to so I'm now I'm going to play the um, a longer a longer clip because uh, this this mentions Coursera. They, I, they don't pronounce. I can't remember how they pronounce it, or if I've pronounced it wrong. But I think of it as Coursera, which is a, a MOOC platform. We've mostly been mentioning FutureLearn, but which was based in the UK. It's still still based in the UK, but it's the 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 uh, it's it's uh, quoted on in Amsterdam. I think it was part of great uh, global university systems now. So. The, the UK doesn't have a platform as such, uh, and I th I'm pretty sure Global University Systems is based in in Amsterdam. Any, anyway, just listen out for Cor Coursera or Coursera, or it, it it does come come up in in this in this clip. Consolidating the edtech industry. Thus far, we argued that investors in general and edtech VC in particular are key actors in constructing the edtech industry and are legitimizing their role in it as moral actors. In this third step, we further develop our focus on edtech investors as political actors. As noted in the introduction, we conceptualize political actors more broadly than state and government structures. Politics refers to the concern for the common good and is about the exercise of power in the broad sense, Shearer, Polozzo, and Matten Citation 2014. Indeed, investors are gaining power as actors who are seen as best placed to decide for the common good, Chiapello Citation 2015. They complement their narrative constructions with futuring activities, Uman, Hoffman, and Hadger Citation 2021, and by constructing powerful cross-sector networks, Ferry and Granabetter Citation 2009, to exercise their political authority in advocacy politics, Naren Citation 2010. Investment Networks To achieve their objectives, VC investors must build various relations with other organizations and individuals. These include the limited partners who commit to investing in VC funds and much wider networks, including financial and market analyst firms, policy actors, academics and universities, journalists, social media commentators, foundations and philanthropies, and other audiences. Ferry and Granabetter Citation 2009. This is part of the laborious work investors undertake to produce conviction and consensus among others, Beckert Citation 2016, in their diagnoses of the current problems of education and their expectations about how EdTech will solve those problems. As capitalization professionals, investors not only deploy discursive repertoires and technical valuation methodologies, but move within specific social networks, organizational situations, and shifting political and economic contexts, Muniz et al. Citation 2017. The first level of networking is an inter-organizational one between VC firms and limited partners, that is, investors and VC firms who expect ROI from the portfolio. They are often not publicly disclosed but AL indicates it is backed by top global limited partners consisting of prestigious college and university endowments, sovereign wealth funds, foundations, strategic education institutions, and family offices from across the U.S., Asia, Europe, Middle East, and South America, calling it an aligned deep global network that is critical to helping AL and its portfolio companies with distribution channels, partnerships, and international resources and networks, as of December 6, 2022, AL listed on its website https owlvc.com slash about.html. As such, a key practice for AL is managing this aligned network towards the shared aim of financing startups, often in co-investment syndicates with others, based on valuations of the future cash flow potential and supporting them to achieve international scale and reach. A related form of networking is between individual actors within the VC firms and the wider investment landscape. Investors do not only finance startups, managing partners at GSV and AL sit on the boards of startups they fund, playing an active advisory and steering role in their development. GSV co-founder Michael Mo, for example, has been on the board of Coursera since its first investment in the startup in 2013 and senior personnel have routinely moved to roles across GSV and Coursera, 
GSV Ventures on Twitter, https, twitter.com slash, xventures slash, status slash, 1377353882360143874 question mark s equal 2 o percent t equal v x l is underscore w b k h g c x d o h m q j z a so john if you if you're listening i don't know if this style is is helpful uh if you can type in <laughs> the the uh urls quickly enough i wouldn't i wouldn't have thought so but uh, I'm not. I'm not sure how that would work on on a an, uh, a, a, a a my eye an all cam device. I think we'll probably put a link in or something. Anyway, um, the th- the thing is. Meanwhile, um, Class Central. If you're interested in the MOOC the MOOC scene or online learning, uh, well, well, we're following Class Central. They report that uh, I'm going to call them Coursera, Cow- Cowsera. It's how the the AI pronounced. Anyway, the th- the thing is that they they basically got a viable uh, business operation at this time because they're doing courses from Google and various other tech companies um, that offer jobs at the end of them or can do they're all they're all job related so some people would say oh well that's not that's not the sort of humanities end that a, a, a university should be offering and the MOOC scene is not not in the place it claimed 10 years ago or slightly more than that now maybe um, but it, it's it's a it's a it's a viable operation and it shows how the technology and the learning methods can work. So I, I think it's quite a good a good stage to have reached, and I think it's part of the should be part of the discussion. And um, I think it's worth sort of just listening to what the what what the platforms have got to say in their own in their own words. The the way they're described as having imaginaries all the time, as if they're um, not really part of the discussion on their own terms. I don't. I, it's not. It's not the only way of dis- describing it. But um, we'll we'll see how all the how all those things go over 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 a while. But the the other thing just to mention is that so Coursera very rarely exhibit in the in the UK, but they will be part of learning technologies. Which is um, an, another show at Excel. So it's a, it's a couple of months after BET, and it's aimed at um, HR departments. It's aimed at adult adult learners, let's say. But it's 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 very commercial. Um, but it's interesting that that's where that's where Coursera are have have a have a stand or a booth. If you're listening from the states. Um, and that, so we'll, I'll, I'll be going to that, and I'll, I'll be looking. Oh, you, you to me are going to be there also. So the, the, the MOOC scene, I think, is part of this discussion, and they'll probably um, relate to AI. Well, I think everybody's going to relate to that quite, quite quickly. But the, you, you can see ways in which they, they're going to, going to. Uh, be part of that situation quite quite rapidly. So, over over the over the next few months, we don't we don't know what's going to happen, but this this situation around Coursera and the MOOC as viable is is um, part of what's going on going on at, at at the moment, and how it all works out, we we don't know. Um, there will be there will be a a conference about digital universities in Exeter uh, in April, and so a lot of this will 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 become more obvious uh, around that around that time, I guess. Uh, meanwhile, back to uh, Dusty Springfield's. <laughs> 